are. Let's talk to James Robinson, former political communications director. James, very good morning to you. Morning. Good to talk to you. Um, very nasty weather out there over the course of the weekend. People said to me this morning, you know, Keir Starmer's having this you know, summit in Downey Street. When you were an advisor, would you have perhaps advised him to go out and, and touch a few local people uh, over in Wales who were suffering from the flooding? Not, you know, I'm thinking in terms, remember Boris Johnson sweeping out water from somebody's house? He was criticised for not doing that soon enough. George Bush, remember when Hurricane Katrina happened, didn't go out and caused himself a lot of damage. I mean, is, is, the, is the day of the, the Prime Minister sort of going out and meeting people over? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think it'd be good for a member of the government to go and visit Wales, I have to say. Um, I also think it's important for uh, him to go through with his summit in Downing Street today, which is making good on a manifesto commitment to tackle attacks on young women. I think yeah. you can do both. But you can um, do uh, both, but it, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they talk about priorities. I mean, there's a sense with Keir Starmer, when he used to do Prime Minister's questions as leader of the opposition, that we always used to say, if something had happened in the morning, we knew that he wouldn't pivot to ask a question about it, because it seemed as though he wasn't the guy that was particularly spontaneous. And similarly today, you know, you've got a lot of people in, in, in quite a lot of discomfort because of the bad weather. Surely somebody mm. else could have held the summit and he could have gone to Wales. Or surely some, he could have held the summit and someone else could go to Wales. Well, maybe, but here's the Prime Minister and here's the figurehead and here's the leader and that's the point. And so it looks this morning as though he's got it wrong again because the priority should be the weather, but it's not. Well, I, I think that um, attacks on women and girls um, is a fairly important issue and I don't think anyone would disagree. Well, it is an so. important issue, but it's not an important issue as much as people who get stabbed to death on the streets of London is an important issue and they're not having a summit about that. So, you know, it looks as though you could pick oh, any right. number sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, OK, so you think that people murdering each other is the government's fault? Well, I don't think it's the government's fault, but when I see Sadiq no, Khan, when I when I see well, when I see mean? well when I see a tweet from Sadiq Khan saying everybody deserves to feel safe in London, um, but he doesn't really do very much about the streets of London being safe, and I'm afraid whether you like it or not, that is his responsibility and is the government's responsibility as well to crack down on crime. You know, um, it's a bit of an easy tap in to go. We're going to stop people from getting their drinks spiked when everybody knows I think it is they're easy. not, I think they're it's not going to. I think it's very difficult, actually, which is why they've, come, they've decided to have a summit to discuss how the industry could help them achieve that very difficult goal of preventing drinks being spiked. I just don't see how you can put a negative spin on someone trying to solve a problem that didn't exist it's 20 not, years I'm ago. I'm not putting a negative spin on I'm just saying that it doesn't seem to be the most important thing to be dealing with at the moment. We know we've got massive outbreak of crime in this country. We've got the police on the front pages of the papers spending 60,000 hours investigating non-crime hate incidents. You might mm. want to think that he would have a slightly better view of the more serious crime of people being stabbed and people being, you know, seriously injured right. and hurt. That's I don't think you can... I don't think you can... You, uh, it just seems to be suggesting that it, because you're tackling... Uh, trying to tackle spiking drinks, you can't also tackle other crimes, but that's not true, is it? You well, can do two. Why is he calling it? Well, why? Right? Let's 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 go down your communications route. Why is he calling it a summit? Why not? I mean, okay, why not? summit meeting. You can call it whatever you want. This is ridiculous. It's just semantics. Call it a summit. Call well, it a meeting. Well, it's just semantics. But it's their it's their word, James. It doesn't matter what you call it, does it? Well, why but why call it a summit then? I mean, I'll call it a summit. This is, well, how can we talk about the issue? What about we call it a summit, a meeting, a, a, a get-together, a plan? Call it what you want. At least you're doing something. Yeah, exactly. But there's a lot of things yeah, that need to be done. Call it a, you know. Let's call it a summit. Okay, Why not? Let's call it a summit. They think it's important. I don't. Uh, let's talk about this petition. 1.8 million people have now signed this petition that say they want a new election. I know that you'll say it, may, it doesn't really make any difference and it won't cause... You don't know that I'm going to say. You don't know that I'm going to say that, actually. Well, OK. Well, I'm looking forward to what you're going to say, but you might say that. Well, what I'm going to say is, if you'll let me speak, go on. 45 million people haven't signed the petition. The fact that, which is the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is, it's serious if people don't... I'm not going to just dismiss two million people, which we probably will be by the end of your show, signing a petition that they want an election. Why? The fact is, this government has had a difficult start and a tricky start, and they're finding their feet. I don't think you can just... I think I think you're right, and the people who signed this petition are right to express disappointment with the government. Well, do you, think, what, then, so, do you think, then, that Keir Starmer should acknowledge it? No, I don't think you should acknowledge it. I think you should acknowledge that... Well, I don't think you should acknowledge that uh, less than 3% of the population have signed a petition. I think he should do... He he and the Labour government should defend their record 
and change course slightly. That's yes. what I think. What, what I think course? What course would you change if you were there? Because you've been in Downing well, Street, right? You've worked in there. No, you I haven't know, been in Downing Street. You, no. you know, uh, but what? Well, but you've probably been. What I mean is, you've been you've been inside the the, the machine, uh -huh. haven't you? Yeah. I have, so, yeah. so you know how the machine works more better than I do. I so, do, what, do yeah. so how would you change course then? What would your advice be? Well, look, I need to think you should focus and Labour should focus on things that matter to British voters and that some of the things you identify on this show regularly are those things. Crime, getting back to work, getting people back to work and making the country and, and focusing on growth. That, yeah. That's what I think he wants to do and that's what I think he will do over the next five years, not five months. You can't judge a government after five months. No, you, you can't. can't. Judge... But we can only judge the government by what they've done and what they've done so far is annoy pensioners, farmers, businesses... Exactly. Uh, individuals uh, who are paying more for for school fees for their chip for their children, or who now can't afford, or who now can't afford to send their kids to school and have to move them to a new school. I don't know you know. for people. Who, hey? I don't really. I, yeah. Well, okay, fine. Yeah. So you don't feel sorry for people who've had to change their no, schools I don't, actually, for their children? No, I don't feel that sorry for people who who are paying ten grand a, a term for school fees. That's what about the people who are, who can't got ten grand a year to spend on school fees? Well, then they get Is free that... school. They get free schools for their children. But those who wish to put their children in better schools because yeah, most private pay, schools pay are AT, better. Yeah, but some of them can't afford to, and many of them will be moving they back into... Grand. They can afford 10 grand, they'll come no, on. No, you see, this is the problem, James. Look, listen, you should, you've no, James. You should... No, James, you should be in the government because you have no uh, compassion for people who work hard, you, and you're you saying that? that you don't you care. Know. You just said you don't I, care I, about I people. I care less about them than other people who've got less money. Why? It's a language, politics is about priorities, isn't it? Are you one of those people that thinks... Are you, people that are, you, kids are, you, are you one of, the, are you one of those people, James? I but I don't think that... I think there are... Issues. Yeah, there are, that's but that's important. the whole point. But are you one of those people who thinks that everyone who sends their kids to private school is loaded with money? Because they're not. Um, no, I'm not. I think I'm not. And I know people, members of my own family have sent their own children to private school and struggle very hard to do so. Right. And I wish. So you don't feel safe. sorry for them if they have to move their kids out? I don't think anyone... I, who is? Show me someone who is, and I might... But anyway, let, can we, I mean, look... Well, I, there's going to be loads of them. There's going to be loads of them. But the point is, is that the attitude of this Labour government, as what we can see it to be, <laughs> seems to be that if you've got money, if you've worked hard, if you've made a business, you're going to be taxed more uh, to provide for those people uh, who are supposedly less well-off. But we've got four million people who are on uh, welfare some of whom should not be on welfare. Even the Labour government has admitted that, and they're going to try and get them off welfare. So there's a sense in the world out there, in the business world certainly, you know, the CBI are saying it, the budget was a disgrace, the farmers are saying it, the budget was a disgrace, pensioners are suffering as a result of what Rachel Reeves did. Um, and even Dan Needle has said today that the farming uh, inheritance tax manoeuvre is wrong, and he, they've done it badly. Sorry, what's your question? My question is that the budget is a disgrace and a, and a disaster. So the idea that uh, that you don't feel that's sorry for anybody... That's a statement. Ask me a question, I'll answer it. Well, you, it's a conversation, James. I don't know what you've been drinking for your tea this morning, but you seem a bit more feisty than normal, so I'll, 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 ra I'll ratchet it up a bit if you want. The point is, is that the government seems to be <laughs> tone-deaf. That is what the question is. Why is the government so tone-deaf to people, ordinary working people in this country, who they said they were going to protect? Because working people in this country are suffering. Well, this is my answer to your question. It's been five months. The last Tory government and the Labour government would have done the same, spent two years paying everyone's wages, OK? Two years paying everyone's wages. Didn't pay my wages. Most people's wages. You you and I were one of the few lucky ones who were able to continue working during COVID, right? Yeah. Most, a lot so, of people... so did an awful lot of people, actually, James. A lot of people did. Yeah. My point remains that the government felt it necessary to pay millions of people's wages. That costs an astronomical amount of money. I didn't see the CBI complaining when the government was paying many of their employees' wages. It was necessary, it was extreme, but it was a very, very, very unusual once in a hundred years situation. That costs money. Yeah. Now, you, when you get into government, you either cut costs and cut spending, to pay for that huge expense, or you put taxes up or a mixture of both. The Tories would have cut spending hugely. Labour chose to raise some taxes by a small amount. That's but a political but, 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 the, but the reality of, the, of all of these raising of taxes, James, is that while they're punishing people on a small molecular level, they're not actually going to create that much money. 
And while they're taking 500 million in inheritance tax from farms, they're giving away another 500 million to farms in Africa and Asia and South America to tackle climate change. They, they've agreed over the weekend to pay uh, a portion of a 239 billion pound bill to poor countries around the world. That's not a priority for most people in this country. And if they want to help the people of this country, what they should be doing is cutting back on that kind of spending, surely, and spending the money here. I don't think it's as simple as that. I, I wish it was, because I think, I think if you're going to have an international effort to try and tackle long-term climate change, which, we, which we've had, um, it, 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 the bottom line is rich countries, richer, better off countries like ours are going to have to pay. Yeah, but the, but the point is, you can't avoid it. Well, can yeah, but you can't then make the point that they've had to make savings and therefore they've had to tax people more because we have to get our economy no, back to normal can, no, while at the can. same time as giving money away. No. I, 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 can't, I can't sit here and pretend that this country is one of the worst places to live on the earth, right? This is a, a brilliant country. I love it. I love getting up every morning. I thank God I was born here. I think it was one of the greatest places on earth, despite the miserable weather. The fact is, we spent billions and billions of pounds on COVID. We had no choice. Now the bills come in. Well, you do have a choice. I've just told you. You, can, to, you don't have to spend it elsewhere. No, no, no. That, that's, a, that's a different issue about global no, climate change. No, it is. It is. You've got to tackle climate change at the same time as trying to sort out the finances. Okay. Yeah. So, once, we, so it, once we've paid our portion of £239 billion pounds a year to various countries around the world, how will our lives be improved on the planet exactly? Well, oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Why is it we, ridiculous? We all, You're it making the ridiculous. argument that we don't have enough money, but yet we're giving no, no, more no, money away no, than ever. Listen, 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 listen. We all know. Look, you can either think that, that climate change is real or it's not real. Most scientists think it's, think it's real. So we have to do something. It doesn't really matter whether you think it's real or not. The point is, is that if, you, if you make an argument... No, James, you're being illogical. If you make an argument you haven't got enough money, how can you then also make an argument we can give billions and billions of pounds away of money no, we don't know? It's just ridiculously reductive. That over 20 years, we're going to help poorer countries right. um, but deal with the effects of climate change. Because at the end of the day, we can't just operate alone in the world. We're not, we can't just be isolated in the world and not... Yeah, but you can't make an argument about having no money and then start giving it all away. Last year we gave them a hundred billion. Now it's two hundred thirty-nine billion. Uh, no, honestly, you, you can't. Uh, look, if you think that if you think that we shouldn't be part of the international effort to tackle climate change, that's fine. But I think we got we haven't got much choice but to. I don't think we should be giving them as much money, particularly as you've pointed out, when we don't have any. But I'll finish well, up with a comment from my. Own, I'll finish up with a comment from my audience, um, James. Yeah. So you don't think I'm picking on you. Rachel says, oh, no, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all with James Robinson. As a woman, I'm more than happy for the Prime Minister to go to Wales today in preference to a summit. So there you go. I find good. Well, you know, maybe he should, but I think he should be doing both. The government mm. should be doing both. He can't be in two places at once. It's all about choices, James, isn't it? After all, that's yeah, what he keeps saying. Political Difficult priorities. choices. They are difficult choices. And look, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I like having an early morning brag. I'm delighted as well. I'm delighted as well. I'm going to see CBI later. I'm going to have a few arguments with a few bosses as well. OK, we'll see if you can convince them that the Labour government's doing a good job. I'll talk to you when we're back over two million on the petition. Thanks very much indeed. James Robinson, former political communications director.